Hi everyone, so I've now had two months on the Octopus tariff for solar and battery owners called Octopus Flux and as May is generally one of the better months for solar generation I thought it was a good time to give my monthly stats update and discuss how Octopus Flux is working for me. I'm also going to update how much money I've made from exporting back to the grid and also savings on my electricity bill throughout the month as well. As always, I want to provide you with real world data so you can make your own views on whether it's worth you installing solar if you haven't already. And if you already do have solar installed, it'd be great if you could let me know in the comments how your generation varied throughout May, as I'm always keen to see the variations depending on roof orientation, array size, and where you're based in the country. As you can tell from the title, it's been a pretty good month this month for solar generation, so stay tuned for the figures. So just a quick introduction for those that are not aware of Octopus Flux. This is a relatively new tariff provided by Octopus Energy and it's designed for users with a solar install and home battery. The tariff is priced across three different periods during the day. There's a cheap off-peak rate between 2am and 5am, a day rate for the rest of the day and then a peak period between 4 and 7pm. Each time also has a corresponding export rate as well and the tariff is designed to help the grid smooth its demand curve throughout the day. By encouraging energy usage overnight by charging batteries and EVs and that kind of thing when energy supplies are plentiful and then during the day at the peak time encouraging low grid usage and export from solar and home batteries between the hours of 4 and 7 pm when the grid needs that energy. For the northeast I have the rates on the screen now. The export rates are 20.92 pence per kilowatt hour during the day and then 33.69 pence per kilowatt hour between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. So way better than the standard export guarantee payment that Octopus offer of 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour. Now these prices are correct as of May 2023 but uh, with the price cap changing in July these might change soon as well. If you want some further information on the Octopus Flux tariff Click in the video in the top right hand corner now where I discuss this tariff in much more detail. Also if you would like to switch to Octopus for this tariff or any of the other smart tariffs they offer it would be great if you could use the referral link on screen now and in, listed in the description as well. You will get £50 in your account and I get £50 in my account too which helps me to keep improving the content I offer to you. Thank you to everyone who's clicked this link so far and joined Octopus. I hope it's working out for you. Just as a quick recap of my solar install, I have a 6.32 kilowatt peak east-west array, six panels on the east facing roof and 10 panels on the west facing roof. This is combined with a 9.5 kilowatt hour give energy battery and five kilowatt give energy gen one hybrid inverter. This was installed by a local company called UCS Renewables who are based in Middlesbrough. They did a brilliant job for me and I would highly recommend using them if you're considering getting solar and batteries installed. You can find out more about UCS Renewables in the description of the video as well. So I've mentioned in my previous videos how Flux has been working really well for me as a high exporter of electricity from my solar panels and it seemed like I switched at about the right time when the day started getting lighter in March. If you want to check back and see my generation for the rest of the month throughout the year click on my channel and while you're there if you're not already please consider subscribing and it would also be great if you like any videos that you get some value from. So overall May has been a much improved month for both the longer days and also the weather improving as well. Much better than the mixed weather that we had in March and April. We've had many glorious days of sunshine combined with good generation. It's just a shame that it doesn't seem to stay this nice for quite as long as I would like in the UK. Although we do ha still have some good months to come with June, July and August. What's also been good this month is where we have our bifold doors on the back of the house. That's heated up a lot of the house during the afternoon and into the evening. And then the heat has then worked its way through the rest of the house and upstairs. So generally it's been really warm in the house, sometimes too warm. And we haven't needed the heating all month, which is fantastic. So let's start by taking a look at the generation throughout May. Total generation across the month was around 758 kilowatt hours versus 554 kilowatts for April, so an overall increase of 37% for the month. What's interesting is we've basically seen a 200 kilowatt hour increase each month over the last three months now. So March was 346, April was 554, and May was 758. Um, June's probably likely to be nearer May's figure though, but let's wait and see. Now I thought that the 758 kilowatt hour figure was really good and it felt like we'd had some great weather in May. That was until I saw a post from Tim over at Tim and Kat's Green Walk. Check out their channel if you haven't already and give them a subscribe. His generation figure was just under 900 kilowatt hours 
Um, he has a slightly larger rate at 6.8 kilowatt peak versus my 6.32 kilowatt peak. And he is based further south than I am. So I think those two factors have just seemed to have given him that extra generation this month. Still, at 758 kilowatt hours, that's about five times my consumption for the month. So I can't really complain. And you can see that from the generation, about 98 kilowatt hours went into the home directly. About 155 kilowatt hours went into the battery to power the home later in the day. And a massive 504 kilowatt hours was exported back to the grid from solar, which is a great result on the flux tariff and is reflected in the monthly payback figures which I'll chat about later in this video. The low stave generation was only 5.04 kilowatt hours on the 12th of May, which was actually worse than the worst day in April. Thankfully, this was a bit of an exception and the second worst day was on actually on the last day of the month at 11.69 kilowatt hours. The highest generation day was a new record for us of 38.38 kilowatt hours on the 29th of May, which I was really happy with. And as you can see, we actually had eight days where we had over 30 kilowatt hours of generation, which is great. I'm wondering if we may just be able to pip 40 kilowatt hours through this system at some point, but we'll have to wait and see. Average generation for the month was 24.5 kilowatt hours. And if we look closer at the lowest generation day on the 12th, you can see that the battery just reached 100% at about half past four, charging up from 65% as the lowest amount at the start of the day. Peak generation was only 824 watts for this day, so not even reaching one kilowatt all day. It really shows what a difference day to day can make, even in May. On the 29th of May, generation began at 4.45 a.m. and the battery was 100% full before 10 a.m., charging from a low of 48%. You can probably see that my battery is generally only draining to around 40%-ish at this time of the year. I probably need to do a little bit more to drain it further every now and again on some days just to keep the battery healthy and so it knows what state of charge it's at. Currently I'm discharging the battery from about 5.30, 5.45-ish and then stopping the discharge at about 7 p.m. to maximize the export return. But maybe once a week or so I should start discharging it earlier just to keep the battery happy. We'll see how it goes. Next, let's take a look at home consumption. Again, not a bad month with only 163 kilowatt hours used and an average daily consumption of 5.25 kilowatt hours. As I mentioned last month, the figure that catches my eye again is the grid consumption which is listed as 2.38 kilowatt hours. On my Octopus app, it's reported slightly higher at 4.83, which is probably more accurate. And this is probably caused by things such as putting the kettle on when there's not enough uh, battery discharge and solar generation to cover that usage, or just through the small amounts where the inverter is balancing the, the load going to the battery from the grid and from the solar. Either way, again, I cannot complain at that amount of usage. And if we look at the grid usage a bit closer, you can see there wasn't really any one day that caused the majority of this usage. Although it looks like there's a few big spikes on this graph, the most power used on any one day was just 0.59 kilowatt hours, which is what we like to see. And next, let's look at the all important export for the month. A grand total of 580 kilowatt hours. So as I mentioned earlier, 504 of this was going straight from the solar panels to the grid once the battery is full. The remainder is coming from discharging the battery during that 4 to 7 p.m. peak period, which equates to 76 kilowatt hours for the month. I'm still doing this discharge from the battery manually between 4 and 7 p.m. at the moment. Um, although I would like to get this integrated to Home Assistant at some point in the future. So we had our first negative bill last month. Let's see how we got on this month. Time to crunch your numbers. So if we look at the figures, 162.81 kilowatt hours consumption for this month. So seems to be about the going rate, I think, for the rest of the months. We had an import. We'll put the 4.83 in there because I think that's likely to be more accurate, um, which equates to £1.57 for the month. So next to nothing, essentially. Um, generation, 758 point four five kilowatt hours and that equates to 580 kilowatt hours of export and the rate for the export equates to one making 149 pounds and 62 pence this month the cost without solar and this is assuming that i was on the standard flexible tariff at 34 pence per kilowatt hour would be 55 pounds and 36 pence. So the cost with solar, this is the export plus the cost that I use to import electricity is minus 148 pounds and five pence. So an overall saving for the month of 203 pounds and 41 pence, which is great. 
we add that to the cumulative savings, we're looking at about £552.44 in the first five months and a bit of having solar installed. And a remaining payback on the system, if you remember, we paid £10,980 to have the system installed. And we're now looking at a remaining payback of £10,427. So next month we'll be halfway through the year and we'll really start to get to see what we can likely make from the first year of having solar installed. But considering this doesn't include the figures from the saving sessions earlier in the year, I think that's a pretty good start. And we've still got a good few months of summer to come as well. There's also a rumour that saving sessions will return in some form this winter, so we'll see what we can do there later in the year. If I hear any more about this, I'll be sure to make a video about it. I quite like these charts as well, the first of which shows how the solar generation has basically increased exponentially since January up to where we are today. And this second chart shows the lowest generation for each month in the year to date in orange. Each monthly average generation is in yellow and the highest generation days are in green. And again, you can see, definitely see that upward trend there. And if we look at our bills overall for the month, we still use gas for our central heating, uh, gas hob, and also to heat our hot water as well. Gas usage for the month was really low with not using the heating at all at £12.60, including the standing charges. Overall, if we include all standing charges for the electricity and include the gas usage for the month, we have a bill of minus £118.57 for the month which is brilliant and it still amazes me that we can power our home via the sun and get paid for it as well. Yes, we have the initial outlay of the solar costs, but we're really starting to reap the rewards of having installed solar now. And we're also, of course, doing our bit for the environment and also the grid as well. In other news from the 1st of July, 2023, the price of energy bills are coming down a little, which is certainly positive news for those that are struggling to pay the bills at the moment, even though prices are way higher than what they were when the energy crisis began still. Although this makes my solar payback take a little longer, overall it's really good news for those and will bring some relief to those that are struggling. For those interested in the rate prices going forward, from the 1st of July, prices for electricity will be 30 pence per kilowatt hour, and for gas, it's eight pence per kilowatt hour, as it stands at the moment. And these are down from 34 pence and 10 pence per kilowatt currently. Also, I hit 1,000 subscribers last week, which I'm quite proud of and it's something I did not expect to happen so soon. So thank you to everyone that has liked, commented and subscribed to my videos. Keep them coming. It seems like it's a really relevant topic for a lot of people at the moment, which is great. And I'm glad that so many of you seem to be enjoying the videos and getting something from them. If you haven't already and you find these videos useful, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video so it helps me reach a wider audience. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.